Some of the most commonly asked questions on the Don't Starve Reddit or other public forums include what's the difference between Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together, which game is better, or for people thinking about buying one or the other, which one should they buy? So in this video, I'm going to give you all the information you'll need to know to answer those questions. Hey there, my name is Salandrak, and you may know me from my comprehensive beginner's guide series for the single player Don't Starve Reign of Giants version of the game, but I've also done live streams in Shipwreck, Hamlet, and Don't Starve Together, as well as a few update videos for DST. In this video, I'm going to cover all the ins and outs of the different versions of the game to help you understand what the options are and help you choose which version or versions to buy if you're considering making a purchase. And before I go any further, I just want to unequivocally state that, with one minor exception, all of these versions of the game are absolutely fantastic. And if you were to flip a coin or roll the dice to make a decision, I'm fully confident that you'll get hundreds if not thousands of hours of high quality entertainment. That said, there are certain features of the various versions that might tip the scales of personal preference one way or the other. But at the end of the day, only you can weigh the value of those features in making your decision. So let's start diving into the details. To start things off, I need to explain some terminology as the various game titles, versions, and bundled packages often get confusing for people new to the franchise. Depending on how you look at them, there are either two or five versions of the Don't Starve experience with a couple of subcategories of each, and if that sounds confusing already, just stick with me for a few minutes and it will all make sense. Looking at the two versions of the Don't Starve games, they are the single player game known as Don't Starve and its related DLC expansions, and the multiplayer game known as Don't Starve Together, which I will usually refer to as DST for short. Now right off the bat, it is critical to remember that these are completely separate games, with DST often being thought of as a multiplayer sequel to the original single player game. The original Don't Starve was released in Spring 2013 and is a single player sandbox survival game. Also known as Vanilla Don't Starve, the world consists of a surface layer with three separate cave levels that are each connected to a ruins level. In Vanilla, there are only two seasons, namely Summer, which is the same as Autumn in DST and the Reign of Giants DLC, and Winter. The only seasonal boss on the surface is the Winter Giant Deerclops, and the only boss below the surface is the Ancient Guardian down in the ruins. Vanilla Don't Starve has an adventure mode which is accessed by entering Maxwell's door from the surface and will have you face a series of special challenges and is as close to a story mode or campaign that any of the games have. This adventure mode is not present in DST or the DLC expansions except for Reign of Giants. Vanilla Don't Starve has a total of 10 playable characters, but you only start out with access to Wilson and Wagstaff, while 6 of the remaining characters are unlocked as you earn in-game experience, and 2 are unlocked in adventure mode. Reign of Giants is the first DLC expansion that was released for single player Don't Starve, and it came out in January 2014. This DLC greatly expanded the vanilla game by changing the number of seasons from 2 to 4, with a seasonal giant boss for each season, namely Deerclops in winter, Moose Goose in spring, the Dragonfly in summer, and Berger in autumn. Reign of Giants also added lots of new mechanics, items, structures, and monsters. Adventure mode is still present, though updated for some of the additional new mechanics, and two new characters were added to the roster, namely Wigfrid, who was unlocked through experience, and Weber, who was unlocked by burying a spider skull in a dug-up grave. Reign of Giants is a much more fleshed-out experience compared to vanilla, and was basically the starting point for Don't Starve Together, which I'll get to in a minute. Shipwrecked is the second DLC expansion for single player Don't Starve, and was released in Early Access in December 2015. This DLC really changes up the gameplay experience as it puts you in a completely different world as compared to any other version of the game. In this DLC, you have four new seasons, Mild, which is overall pretty pleasant, Stormy, which has tempestuous storms, Monsoon, that will cause flooding, and Dry, which is hot enough to cause overheating and is when the volcano erupts. 
The world consists of a bunch of islands surrounded by navigable ocean with a variety of boats and related equipment to let you get around. None of the bosses from the other versions are present, but there are three new bosses, namely the seal nato that comes out during stormy season, the tiger shark that roams the waters year round but is most easily fought during monsoon season, and the quacken which is spawned by trolling deep waters any time of the year. There's also a volcano that can be explored, which can be appeased during the dry season by giving offerings to the Altar of Snacrifice. And all of the characters from Vanilla or Reign of Giants can be used in Shipwreck, and there are also four new characters to try. Wolani, the unperturbable surfer girl, Warley, the culinarian chef, both of whom are unlocked from experience, as well as Woodlegs, the pirate captain, and Wilbur, the monkey king, who are each unlocked by doing specific actions in the game. The third and final DLC for Single Player Don't Starve is Hamlet, which, like Shipwreck, significantly changes the game yet again. In this world, you have entirely new biomes, tons of new monsters and items, and lots of new mechanics to deal with. There are three seasons that you'll have to contend with, Temperate, which is nice and pleasant, Humid, which has fog so thick you'll feel encumbered, and Lush, which will strain your sanity with oppressive hay fever. And as with Shipwrecked, none of the bosses from the other versions are present, but Hamlet offers four new bosses, namely the Ancient Herald, who appears while the Apocalypse is active, the Queen Wolmant, who lives in the depths of the Mant Hill, the Pugilisk, who is the protector of the Fountain of Youth, and the Large Iron Hulk, which assembles when all of its parts are activated at the same location. As with Shipwrecked, all characters you have access to from the other versions remain present, and there are three new characters to try. Wormwood is available from the get-go in Hamlet, while Wheeler is unlocked by experience, and Wilba is unlocked through in-game actions. So, to summarize, Single Player Don't Starve consists of the vanilla game and three DLC expansions, Reign of Giants that expands the vanilla game, and Shipwrecked and Hamlet that offer very different gameplay experiences. All of these versions are available on computer through Steam, and are also available on modern generation consoles, including the Xbox One, PS4, and the Nintendo Switch. Of the console versions, I've heard that the Nintendo Switch does have some bugs and performance issues, but otherwise you'll get the same basic game on console as you will on computer. The only major difference being that the Steam version gives you access to mods, which can range from small quality of life tweaks and enhancements to complete overhauls of the game. The different DLCs do require that you own the base vanilla game in order for them to work, but can basically be played as separate standalone games. Or, and this is one of the awesome features of single player Don't Starve, whether on computer or console, you can also link worlds and travel back and forth to the different DLCs with the same character. This allows for a tremendous amount of replayability and interesting gameplay combinations as you move items and structures from one DLC to the others. Now, some of the confusion with Single Player Don't Starve has to do with the way these titles are often bundled together. For example, the Xbox Store has a Don't Starve Giant Edition, which is basically vanilla plus the Reign of Giants DLC, while on the PlayStation the same thing is called Don't Starve Console Edition plus Reign of Giants Expansion. Meanwhile, over at Nintendo, you'll find the Don't Starve Nintendo Switch Edition, which is vanilla, Reign of Giants, and Shipwreck all together. And just to keep things really confusing, Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation all sell a Don't Starve Mega Pack, which includes vanilla, Reign of Giants, Shipwreck, and Hamlet, as well as the multiplayer Don't Starve Together, and a bunch of in-game currency items for DST that are used to purchase cosmetic items and unlock certain characters. Moral of the story, when contemplating a purchase of any of the Don't Starve games, always be sure to look closely at what is included, and regardless of what the package is called, check to see which versions are part of the bundle. Now, there is a Pocket Edition of Don't Starve and a Pocket Edition of Shipwrecked available on iOS and Android. Don't Starve Pocket Edition is Vanilla Don't Starve with the Reign of Giants expansion, while Shipwrecked is a separate standalone game and does not require that you own Don't Starve Pocket Edition. Unfortunately, unlike on computer or the consoles, you cannot link worlds between Don't Starve Pocket Edition and Pocket Edition Shipwrecked, and neither Hamlet nor Don't Starve Together are available on mobile. 
The mobile versions are also known to be quite buggy and if you're capable of getting Don't Starve on any other platform, I would highly recommend doing so and I only recommend getting Pocket Edition if that truly is your only option or you really just want to get your Don't Starve fix while on the go. And on the topic of mobile Don't Starve, I'll just briefly mention that there is a spin-off game being developed for mobile called Don't Starve New Home, but currently I don't really know a lot about this game. What I do know is that it will be multiplayer, but it is not being developed by Clay, the developer of the original games. Instead, it is being made under license from Clay, and is being developed by Chinese developer Shenku Games, and will be published by Tencent. Now let's shift gears and talk about the sequel to Don't Starve, the multiplayer Don't Starve Together. This version had a beta that started in December 2014, it went into early access in June 2015, and full release in April 2016. When it first came out, DST was basically a surface level multiplayer version of the Reign of Giants DLC, but has since been massively expanded with all sorts of new stuff that single player doesn't have. For example, DST has sailing mechanics that are completely different from Shipwrecked, a cave and ruins level that is quite a bit different from Vanilla or Reign of Giants, and all sorts of seasonal events, new bosses and mobs, and just all sorts of stuff that isn't present in any of the single player versions of the game. That said, most of the basic mechanics are pretty much identical between the two games, but lots of the stuff in DST is balanced for a multiplayer experience rather than solo. So, for example, the seasonal bosses all have substantially more health in DST, as do many but not all regular monsters. And some of the boss fights, such as the Ancient Fuel Weaver in the Ruins, Toadstool in the Caves, the Crab King in the Ocean, and the Celestial Champion of the Lunar Isle, none of whom are in single player Don't Starve, can be quite challenging on your own, though they are doable solo with sufficient practice and preparation. In terms of characters, there are a lot of familiar faces as compared to the single player versions, though as of the making of this video, all of them, except Wilson, whose turn is coming up soon, have been refreshed with character updates, making them play quite a bit differently from their single player counterparts. And unlike in single player, where most of the characters have to be unlocked by experience or in-game activities, almost all of the characters in DST are available from the first time you play the game. Exceptions are Wanda, Wartox, Wirt, and Wormwood, which can be purchased with real money or woven using spools, an in-game currency item that is obtained by unraveling cosmetic skin items, which themselves can be purchased with real money. But they are also given randomly to players each day when logging into the game and periodically while playing. Accordingly, it is possible to unlock all of these characters without paying any additional money, it just might take a while to accumulate enough spools to do so. Note that if you purchased on Steam, Wormwood is unlocked for free if you also own the Hamlet DLC. As noted earlier, Don't Starve Together is not available on iOS or Android, so if you want to experience multiplayer Don't Starve, you'll need to get it on Steam or any of the modern generation consoles. And as with single player Don't Starve, the biggest difference between the Steam version and the consoles is the availability of mods, which again offer all sorts of tweaks to the game, including some mods that add features from the single player DLCs. Now that you understand the differences between the various versions of Don't Starve, here are my recommendations on which version or versions to get based on various factors you might want to consider. I will try to be as objective as possible as there is plenty of room for personal opinion and preference, particularly if you want to engage in a discussion as to which version is quote unquote better. Because the fact of the matter is that whether you go the single player route or choose multiplayer, opt for a PC version or go for console, they are all fantastic games capable of providing hundreds if not thousands of hours of enjoyment. So long as you're having fun, you'll have made a good choice. So, first consideration. If you want to get the biggest bang for your buck regardless of the cost, then without a doubt you should get one of the Mega Pack bundles, especially if you can nab it when it's on sale. Whether on Steam or console, it normally runs about 32 US dollars, but periodically goes on sale for about 15. 
And considering you're getting single player Don't Starve with all the DLC expansions as well as Don't Starve Together and some in-game DST currency, that's a hell of a deal. And if you're willing to spend a little bit more and are on Steam, you can also get a Best of Clay bundle that adds in several of their other games for no shortage of entertainment options. On the flip side, if you're wanting to get the best bang for your buck spending as little money as possible, then hands down you should probably just get Don't Starve Together, which has a full retail price of about $15, but periodically goes on sale for about 5 this game has a ton of content to enjoy, along with regular updates, cosmetic items, and multiplayer support, but can also be played solo. Now if you're debating whether you should get a Don't Starve game on computer or are thinking of going with a console version, I would definitely recommend going with computer and for one simple reason, mods. Although the base game, whether on PC or console, comes packed with plenty of entertainment options, Mods take the possibilities to infinity and beyond, and even if you aren't planning on using mods, there are lots of aspects of the controls that will just feel and work better if you're on a computer. And as I already noted earlier, please don't bother with the Pocket Edition, unless that's the only option you have or you just really want to play on the go. My final objective factor, one which you've hopefully figured out already, is that if you are planning on playing with friends or even strangers, then of course you should get Don't Starve Together, as single player Don't Starve and all of its DLCs are just that, single player games. And the final consideration I'll go over is less objective and subject to at least some degree of personal opinion, on which reasonable minds may differ and reach opposite conclusions. If you want to get just one game or the other, but are planning on playing exclusively solo and want the best single player experience, then I would actually recommend going with single player Don't Starve and all three DLC expansions, and for a couple of reasons. Because Don't Starve Together was coded for multiplayer online gameplay, the responsiveness of the controls, whether it's movement, combat, gathering, etc., it all just feels different in DST, and in this case, different is not quite as good. In single player, the controls are solid, whereas in DST, even if you're playing in offline mode, it just feels ever so slightly… laggy? Now content wise, although DST has a ton of stuff that single player doesn't have and gets regular updates, there's also a ton of stuff present in single player and its expansions that just isn't in DST. And I think here the qualitative difference between the two versions tips the scale in favor of the single player game with the expansions. And that's because Shipwrecked is a vastly different game than Reign of Giants or DST, and Hamlet is again vastly different from all the other versions of the game. And finally, it's definitely worth repeating that DST is balanced for a multiplayer experience, while single player is of course balanced for playing solo. Although yes, all of the content in DST can be done solo with sufficient practice and preparation, I would bet good money that the average gamer never even sees half the content that DST has to offer. On the other hand, because it is balanced for solo gameplay, regular Don't Starve and its DLCs still provide a solid challenge, but the full breadth of content is far more achievable for the average gamer. Now, as a couple of counterpoints in DST's favor, there are lots of people that really do like the cosmetic items that DST has, as well as the regular updates, periodic and seasonal events, and the updated character roster. So if those types of features appeal to you, then by all means go ahead and go with DST even if you're just planning on playing it solo. And besides, none of these titles are particularly expensive, so if you start out with one and get bored or find it too easy or too tough, there's always the greener grass on the other side of the fence. And there you have it, a complete overview of the different flavors of the Don't Star franchise with recommendations on which version or versions to buy if you're considering a purchase. And if at this point you're still stumped on which one to choose, flip a coin or roll some dice, and whatever the outcome, you'll have a wonderful time. Thanks for watching, feel free to let me know down in the comments which game you personally prefer and why, and now get out there and don't starve.